yesterday we introduced the topic of having difficult conversations, talked about how, how important it is in so many ways. We don't get, you know, any path from where we are now to better is going to involve some kind of difficulty. Usually, I mean, if you're in a house that's burning down and there's a fireman's net and you jump out into it, you know, well, that didn't involve a lot of, a lot of difficulty, but most things it's not from pain to instant relief. Most things are something's painful or something we want to get better. And it's confronting some issues and having to deal with some issues and not avoiding those. And yesterday we talked about how the fight or flight parts of us get kicked in and we either get defensive and push and persuade or we avoid. So that's a little bit about what we said, we said what the first thing we need to do is to when you enter into a difficult conversation, you know, make sure that you're creating psychological safety for the other person because you want everything in them to come out and you want it to be put in this no fly zone is what I like to call it. You know, you're on that side of the table. I'm on this side of the table. Let's get a, a, a safe space out in the middle of the table in between us. And that place is where we're going to put our perspectives and our feelings, okay? And our thoughts and our opinions and our needs and our wants and all of that. We're gonna put that out there in this space and nothing's going to hurt them out there. We need an operating table, you know, to do this work that's germ free. So what that means is when somebody puts an opinion out there for the safe space, we don't instantly negate it. Well, that's not true. Or you shouldn't, do, you know, that kind of minimalization or gaslighting of their reality or whatever it is. We want to have a safe place in order, in order to have that. Okay. So that's kind of what we talked about yesterday. What I wanted to do um, today for a moment is I want to talk about the preparation for the conversation, because a lot of our failure to do difficult conversations well comes from the headspace that we're in when we go into it. The headspace that we're in when we go into it. And a lot of times that headspace we're in is not a good headspace because that headspace is actually on fire. Okay, the parts of your brain that create less thinking, less problem solving, less empathy, less understanding, less options, those those parts are firing up and all of that good stuff gets lessened. And what you want to do is you want to walk in there, you know, clear headed, right? Ready to bring your best to the conversation. You also want to walk in there um, as least afraid as you can be, because that's going to do the same thing. So how do we do that? Well, one of the things that, that I like to talk about, about in having any kind of difficult conversation is what what I like to refer to as the most difficult conversation you have to have is the one that comes before the difficult conversation. And that is, it's the difficult conversation with yourself, okay? The difficult conversation you have with yourself first. Now, this is like, you know, when I would go out and play a golf tournament, what I do, get my clubs ready, right? kind of like, you know, dig out the grooves and make sure there's no gravel or sand stuck in there. And you get, a, you know, you clean the grips because you want to go in there really, really ready. You know, a soldier goes into battle, they, they clean their weapon. They make sure it's all working. Pilot does a checklist before they take off. Okay. Well, that's what I want you to think about. You got a difficult conversation to have with your kid or your spouse or the person you're dating or your boss or a coworker, whoever it is, a friend, extended family, have the difficult conversation with yourself first, okay? Now there's a number of reasons for this, probably all sums up, you know, one of my favorite verses where Jesus said, you know, let's get the log out of our own eye first. And then he said something really amazing. He said, then we can see clearly to help somebody else, it's got, a speck in their eyes. We want to help somebody see a problem. We got to be able to see the patient, if you will, well, right? Our eyes have to be clear. 
if we think somebody's got an issue that we want them to address, or if we do together, we can't address them and see them clearly if we haven't cleared up our own head first. Get the log out of our own eye first before we try to point something out to somebody else. So what does that mean? Well, first of all, I like for people to really have a place where they can talk it out with someone who's not just siding with them against the other person, but talk it out with someone who wants the best outcome. Okay. Certainly they're your ally. That's why you're talking to them, but they want the best outcome. You know, for example, in a marriage, if there's a conflict, somebody goes and talks to a counselor about it. Hopefully the counselor is looking for the best outcome for the marriage, not just siding with a person that he or she is a jerk, right? Which we see way too much of, but looking for the best outcome. Okay. So sit down with somebody like that and then tell your story and tell it in full. And here's the point I want to make bleed off all of the emotion. Okay. You got some hurt, you know, you probably got some rage, all this anger, you got all this, you know, feelings of contempt and all of this, you know, rah, rah, I can't believe they did this to me, and which is actually very good and valid. It's just not helpful in a conversation with the person, but it is helpful for you to get it out of your system first because you don't want it clogging up your brain while you're going in there. You certainly don't want to be expressing, trying to get to a resolution of something in a lot of anger. Okay. Remember, one of my favorite verses. Be angry, the Bible says, and in your anger, don't sin. So see, we got to face our anger. Be angry. Good. I'm glad you don't like this. That's good. But in it, when you're working it out with somebody, don't, and what does the word sin mean? It means to miss the bullseye. Okay. Don't miss the mark. So in our anger, don't let it get us way off to where we're causing more destruction in the conflict than we're helping. Let's hit the bullseye of trying to solve the problem. So to do that, you got to talk through all this emotion first. So when you go in there, you're ready. Okay. The second thing is get very clear with yourself about what do you want the outcome to be? What do you want the outcome to be? Do you want to leave from there? Just having them understand where you're coming from. Do you want to leave from there? towards reconciliation? Do you want to leave from there towards a future path? Do you want to leave from there getting a commitment from them to go do something for the next step? There's 80,000 things, but get clear about what do you want? Okay. I was just, just talking to um, a client this morning in a consulting situation where they're trying to bring somebody around and Part of it was for the team to get clear, first of all, about, well, what do you want? Before we go talk to him, let's figure out what you really want. You know, do you want him to stay here? Do you want this to work? Do you want him to not stay here? And in the difficult conversation, that's what's got to be said. Do you want him to make some specific changes? What are they? But get clear first what you want, because if you're dealing with a difficult person, you may get moved off of that. They may manipulate you and start to brain twist you a little bit. So be clear about you want what you want. And then also remember without emotion and rage and all that kind of stuff. And then also practice it. Now that sounds cheesy, but I want you to maybe role play it with somebody because you're building skills and confidence and then have the other person be defensive or blame me or whatever. And then you're going to be ready with your response. So when they say, yeah, but you, and you say, well, you know, I'll be glad to talk about me in a moment, but right now I want to focus on what I just said about how I felt hurt when you did a, B or C. And you learn those skills of redirecting and coming back to it. And so you might want to write a script. Some people go in difficult conversations. So, you know, sometimes, sometimes my mind gets a little clear. So I really wanted to write down what I wanted to say here. And you, and you do that. There's something wrong with that. Write it down. You, it'll, it, it may help you to be very, very clear. So when you're looking at um, 
getting ready to do this, getting all of this kind of emotion out of it, get your skills ready, get your, your script ready, write it down, and then start with, begin, you know, as Stephen Covey said, begin with the end in mind, start down with affirming the relationship and why you're there. You know, I wanted to talk to you because I care about our relationship. And I want to talk to you because, you know, we've had this issue and I'd like to talk to you so we can find a good solution where we can go forward and do something affirming in the beginning. So it lets them know my goal here is for a better future, not to just necessarily end something or make it harmful for you or whatever. So start with affirming the relationship and what you want the desired outcome, affirm the person, say, I love you, I want this to work. So what I really want to sit down, do is sit down and see if we can kind of understand. Let's just start with trying to understand where each of us is coming from, okay? So just a little tip, how to begin. Begin before you begin. Sit down with yourself. Log out of our own eye first. Another thing you might want to see is what stories are you telling yourself about this person? One of the biggest things I've had to do in negotiating very difficult situations is to sit down with the people beforehand and say, what are the stories you're telling yourself in your head about this person? Well, they don't, all they care about, do you know that? Well, they don't really care about what, do you know that? They just think that, do you know that? See, a lot of times, a lot of the emotion, the conflict that we're reacting to are actually about stories that we're telling ourselves about the other person before we've even heard them out. And we're judging people by their behaviors, but remember, individuals judge themselves usually by their intentions. And they may not be trying to hurt you at all. They just may be doing what they think is right or what's helpful or kind of lost in their own little world. But see, we impugn people's motives and we judge their motives and we say, well, all he cares about him himself. So of course he's gonna, well, we don't know that. What are the facts that we know that support that story? So we go into it with a clean head and we go into it curious, trying to find out what the truth is, not assuming that we already know. And how many times you heard people say, well, I know he's gonna say. Well, I know what he's gonna say. I mean, why would we do any good talk? I know what he's gonna say. No, you don't. No, you don't. You may even have a very educated, great probabilistic formula for coming up with what he's going to say that may be right 99% of the time, but you don't know. You don't know. So let's get humble and let's seek to understand before seeking to be understood. Okay. Just one more little tip with difficult conversations. And um, there you go.